Hi, this is Jason Most with Inroads Credit Union, and tonight is DIY with Inroads. Do you enjoy decorating for the holidays? Do you like giving gifts to your friends, your family, or even yourself? Then you're in for a treat tonight. We're back with DIY expert and stylist Shannon Quimby, and she's going to show you some tricks on how to make these amazing, budget friendly holiday gift ideas. So, without further ado, DIY expert and stylist Shannon Quimby. Shannon? Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. Um, yes. These DIYs, and we're going to be showing how to make this and this uh, tonight. And when um, Jason said budget friendly, we're talking like rock bottom cheap. And that's the best part about all the DIYs that I've been sharing with Inroads is everything that I've been sharing. So you've got to go back and check all the other videos. It's very cost effective, okay? It saves money. And that's pretty important right now because. During the holidays, right, we want to, sometimes we like have a budget for our friends or our family, and a lot of times, you know, we want to stay within that budget, and you blow it real quick. But that's what's the beauty about DIYing, is that it's original, it's one of a kind, and it comes from the heart. And then also, it doesn't break a bank. So, we're going to get started, and if you have any questions, Jason's going to, you know, help us out and uh, feedback, so definitely comment as we go. Happy to answer any questions. All right, so here we go. So the first one, I got two tonight. So the first one I'm gonna show is this fun joy sign. Now, a really simple way to immediately save money, and I like to salvage, I'm always reusing what I have, is you take an old kitchen cabinet door, right? Okay, so if you've been remodeling or if you have friends at remodeling or your neighbors, a lot of times these go in the dump, right? They'll go in the garbage. That's the best thing is we want to reuse, we want to recycle. Now, say you go, Jen, I, I'm, not reuse, I'm not remodeling the kitchen or the bathroom right now. Um, a really good uh, place to go is the Rebuilding Center in North Mississippi. Um, any salvage place, they have hundreds of these. I'm not joking, they have it lined up, so any of the salvage places, and they only go for like a buck or two, okay? And a lot of places, you can literally go on some websites and they'll give them for free. So, right here, so it always has, it has this nice uh, frame already around it, okay? So it has it like this. Now, the first thing you wanna do, because pretty much all of the cabinetry has a seal on it, has a finish, so notice if it's shiny, um, and if it's painted, also, it's going to have a sheen. So you definitely need to take a piece of sandpaper. And the sandpaper that I like to use is like a 100 grit. Now, if you don't understand what grit means on sandpaper, the higher the number, the smoother the sandpaper is. So this is a, this is a 150. Uh, no, this is a 100. 150, then it goes 200, 220. It even goes down to like 60, which is really coarse. So, very simple, all you want to do is you just want to rough up the, um, the varnish, okay, or the seal that's on that and get it a little gold. Now, you don't have to take it all off. You don't have to do that. It's just enough where it gets it gold. And I actually have already um, done this, but I'm just giving you the idea. It's really simple. Get all around because if you don't do this, What's gonna happen when you put your paint on and um, after it dries, if you take your fingernail and you, you go like this, literally the paint will just scrape right off. So it's really important to sand it, get that off. And if you wanted to, you can use a primer and to prime it um, first if you wanted to. And that's actually going to um, make the sign last even longer. I have a tendency to be a little lazy and not prime. But it doesn't mean you don't have to. So there we go. That took what, like a minute. Then, then what you want is definitely there's dust on it. So you wipe it off the dust. Make sure it goes all that because you don't want to get dust, you know, um, in your paint. Now, 
The two colors I'm using, obviously, are best of colors, white and red. The beauty about this project is it could be any colors. So uh, if you're decorating for the holidays and you're doing pinks and whites and um, you're doing purples and blues, you can accommodate this DIY for that. So once again, very easy, very original, and it's all DIY. So I've got just this, this is actually just a color sampler that I got um, from Miller Paint, which, all the, by the way, I always like to buy local. Um, and this is, just a, this is just their standard white, and you just get a, this, these are literally called like a throwaway brush because they're only worth just a couple bucks. Sometimes the bristles come off of these when you use them. Don't worry about that. Um, if I just pop the bristle off. And, I mean, pretty simple. You're just going to paint the whole entire thing. That's what I did with this one that's finished right here. All the way around. I also like to do the edges. So if, this, if you put the sign up on a wall and you're walking lengthwise and it's white all the way around. Now, you're probably going to have to, if you have a dark surface like this, notice it's going to probably take um, about, I would say, three coats. If you put the paint on, this is a this is a boo-boo. If you put the paint on like this, here we go, like gluck, like oh, okay. What's going to happen is for, it's going to take forever to dry, forever to dry, and it's going to be clumpy because you're not going to have that same thickness all the way around. So it's really good to spread the paint out like so. Try not. Try not to get it all lumpy, and it's it's just not going to turn out nice. Okay, so simple. Okay, go with the grain. Probably two to three coats. Let each let it dry between each coat, and then you're done. I know I didn't lose you on this step. I know I did it. Okay, so simple, so easy. So I'll set that aside. Remember, if you have any questions as you're watching, feel free to put them in the chat. We're going to answer questions as we go along. Yeah. Now, this one's done. I will move this out of the way. So here's one that's done, okay? Now this one, look at this. It was blue. This cabinet was blue. So it's gonna be fun because I'm gonna do another sanding technique and it's gonna be fun how that shows out afterwards. Um, now, I can freehand very easily letters. Some people are like, oh, absolutely not. There's no way. Um, so if you want to, what I recommend, make it easy, is just go, you can go to um, any craft store and you can get um, stencil letters. And I got these at, uh, I think I got it at Joanne's Fabrics. And I'm going to spell joy. Um, and you just tape them on. Now I eyeball it, okay? Now, once again, you don't have to eyeball it. You can take a um, tape, uh, ruler like this, so let's say you know, you're not comfortable eyeballing. You find your center between here. So this would be, I got this one is uh, 14 and a half. So 14 and a half, that's uh, seven and a quarter. So then I would mark the center of that, seven and a quarter right there, like so, give a little mark. Take, this is my O, my center letter. Find the distance of that, so that's four and a half. So four and a half, what am I, doing my math, that's two and a quarter. So I'd measure over two and a quarter, like that, and that's my center. It's pretty easy. Now, I'm gonna show you something. I'll lift this up. So I have the letter centered correctly, but notice this one's dropped down. So if you like the location of the top here, you definitely want to measure. So this is a quarter of an inch. So then I would once again measure each, each letter up a quarter of an inch, like so. And there we go. Oh, this one's a little low too. So the beauty about uh, these stencils is they come in all different fonts and all different sizes. Uh, I like to use the word joy uh, for one because I am, I like my DIYs to be fast and quick. 
I know, doesn't that sound lazy? But it's a word that is universal, and it's a word that can be used year-round. So it's one of my all-time favorite words. Um, but I kind of I kind of joke about that because I can get it done quicker versus you know festive or that would take forever or Merry Christmas holy schmoly that would take forever so there we go now got that tape down like so okay so then you take your pencil get this out of the way and. Um, now, some people, you probably think, well, then you would just take the red paint and stencil. You take a stencil brush, and you would just stencil around that. So what I'm going to show you is a technique. See how, see how nice and crisp these outlines are? Very crisp in sense. I noticed that with stenciling, you've got to, you always have this frayed look outside the letters. If, um, because you stencil, and then the paint goes underneath the, the letter itself. So... I'm going to show you a trick, which actually I was inspired by my best friend Joanne. She did this, so I am stealing her idea, and that's the best thing also about DIYing, is that we learn from others, right? It's just, it's kind of like cooking. When you start like, oh, I did this, or I added this, or I deleted that, or this is my secret recipe. DIY is the same way too. As soon as you start talking about how you're doing it, Others will pitch in ideas that you never thought of, and it always makes the project turn out better. Okay? And so my friend Joanne, she did, she did this idea using a um, screwdriver. I know, it's crazy. That gets the line straight. So you're probably thinking, what the heck? I know, I know. All right. So I outlined it, and now I'm going to take this off, so I'll show you that I have joy right here. Oops, I missed it. How did I miss that? There we go. Okay. There we go. Can you see that? I don't know if you can or not. But uh, I spelled, I did the J and the O and the Y. Okay? Now, <coughs> screwdriver. So you can use a flathead or you can use a Phillips. Uh, I I would not recommend using an exacto knife because a lot of times it'll skip and you don't want to cut yourself, okay? So I then take the screwdriver and with the, um, I outline the pencil of the letter. So I'm basically just going over the lines and you've got to push a little bit um, to get down into the groove and bring it around and you continue to do this all around each letter, okay? And um, once again, it takes a little bit. I noticed, um, I like, I prefer to use a Phillips um, versus a flathead, but each to his own, okay? Uh, and it just goes, you see, it just goes all the way around. Now what happens here is this is gonna start flaking. You're gonna see some paint come up because um, it's going down into the wood. So when you're done with that, on all of these, when you come around, you definitely want to wipe it off. So that's the repeat because you don't want to um, have this uh, leftover paint, um, these little frayed stuff go into the red paint, okay? So this project, as always, what, well, so far this has cost me nothing. Oh, and hard on. The stencil cost me um, five dollars, which was A through Z and all of, all the letters too. So we're looking at right now five bucks. Oh, and then if you have a coupon at forty percent off, then it's even less. So bring it all around like so until it's covered. And once again, I've already done that, so you don't have to watch me do it for like the next fifteen minutes. So I'll set that down and put that right here and show you what looks like that. Okay, so all that is is just me retracing the lines as it goes all the way around. Now, this one also is blue. So I have two of the blue. So notice it's darker. Um, on this one, you're not going to have that 
you won't have that blue showing up. You're going to be showing the grain of the wood. And that's what's really fun about these projects is that when you start sanding them off a little bit, each one is going to be always a little bit different. That's what's, once again, what's so unique about DIY. Um, so when you're done with that, wipe it off because then you have all those um, left over the fraying that I was saying. Okay? It's like this. And then you get, this is just acrylic paint. It's a buck, 99 cents. And I got primary red. This is the color I used. So I literally just have basic white and primary red. And you can also get these at any craft stores. So get a little bit here. It's better to put some in. Um, I literally just cut like a little paper cup here. Um, and then you want a uh, paintbrush in a, that is angled, okay? Because it's going to go, it'll, it's easier to stay, you paint within the lines. Now, the reason I did all this work with the screwdriver is because the paint, sometimes you go, oh, and you go over your line, especially when you're stenciling. This, is paint, this has created a groove. You have created a groove. And so the paint is going to go down into the groove. And that's, that's the great part about this little step here that I told you my bestie showed, is that you're going to get that really clean seam. Here, I'll show you. See? Tight. Very tight. The one thing about using red paint, and it's and I like to use, I do like to use primary red. You could also use like a barn red. Definitely want to go into something that's darker. If you go into, if you wanted a true red, you um, a lot of times there's um, reds that will turn pink, and that's kind of disappointing if you're not trying to go for pink, you're trying to go for red, and you end up having pink. So. This project, and I'm going to show you also, you probably want to, and I'll just do the J like this. I'll finish this up. See, with that angled brush, you get a lot more stability when you're painting. Um, it's also, notice, and I'll show you a technique on the, on the O. So there's the J. So probably two more coats if you want that dark, that uh, dark, dark red, okay? This is something too. Don't be afraid. A lot of times you're like, oh, and you start doing this. You're like, oh, all the way around, okay? If you're worried about that, it's something, you know, it's like a little nervous using that, getting across the lines. Practice. Practice just stro using the stroke with the paintbrush and just going like that, okay? Get accustomed to it on how it, how it comes out because that's going to dry better. This paint dries very fast when you do thin coats. So when you do that, then you can do a lot line like that. All right, and then, oh darn, I went over a little bit, big deal. Just wipe it off. But that gets it a nice clean uh, and even stroke versus this when you get down and you're like, uh, uh, okay. So definitely keep it as long as many long strokes as possible versus that little dabbing step. Very simple, very easy. Okay. So then when you're done with that, my joy. Should I just finish this? I probably should because I can tell you more ideas with this. So definitely the angle brush, and then when you're done because this one will still be wet, you're going to take a, that same uh, uh, grit sandpaper and you're going to sand over the, the uh, colors. And that's going to expose what's underneath. Okay? So when I say what's underneath, on this board, on this one, remember we have the blue? We have the blue, that's going to expose a little bit of the blue underneath. Now, the more you sand, the more you're going to expose. So an idea on that would be then to just lightly 
lightly sand. If you wanted to, you could go with a higher grit, like a, instead of a 100, you could go with a 150. That would be a good idea. Uh, this one, I started, this one actually I did use a 150. And I don't know if you can see, can you see how kind of that white grain goes through, such like that? And it's just a light, it's just a light rubbing with that. And you go one direction, okay? If you start swirling it, you're gonna see that swirl in the sandpaper. The grit's gonna literally show a pattern of that. So you definitely want, when you sand, you want to go um, as one direction to get that, once again, see, and you can see how this has happened like this, it goes like that. So you can kind of go like this if you wanted to, but don't go all over the place. It's just gonna look uh, like it didn't age well, this is this you want this to look like it's been on the board for a long time. So that's the also the uniqueness of that um, technique is if you go uh, sand with the grain or in one direction, those letters are going to then um, be in unison. So if you want if you sand in the Y in one direction and then the O a different, well that's just not gonna that's not gonna look good. Um, so. This is such an easy project that you can do, and notice it doesn't take long at all. It really doesn't. Um, and I, you know what? Every time I've done this project um, and given them as a gift, my friends or my family just love them. And you can even do you can do a monogram, right? You can do their name. Um, you can ask them, hey, what's your favorite word? A lot of kids have favorite words. Um, and it's just, it's just a fun, special gift. Another thing, too, about this project, and also the other one that I'm gonna show, is this is a really good family or friends gathering project that you can do. And you could literally say, um, bring over a board. Bring a board. And you have the, all the paint, which is, right? this and a little bit of leftover paint. You don't have to go even buy paint. You can, you know, if you've got leftover paint in the garage, just use what you got there. There's no specific paint that you have to use. Um, one, and not too many people use it very often, but there is oil-based paint still. I would not use the oil-based paint for, uh, for the reason that it takes forever to dry. I mean, a long, long time. Plus, um, it's really not good for the environment either. So most of the paints are water-based, which is called latex. So uh, this is already dry. Just by talking to you, that uh, first coat has already dried up. So I'm already going on my second coat with the joy. Um, now, once again, with the stencil, I just seem, it just frays. The paint, it goes underneath that. And um, I, for me, I've never been a good stenciler. Isn't that funny? I've been DIYing my whole entire life practically, but I've just never really mastered um, stenciling. Or maybe I just don't like how the outcome, how it kind of comes out. Um, but uh, this, by using the uh, screwdriver, it uh, kind of gives that rough and older edge also without the letters going kind of crazy. So notice this is my second coat, and I'll finish that like that and go around on this with a Y. But once again, you can use you know any word, you can use symbols, you can paint trees. You know, that's the beauty about DIYing is um, there's no cap to creativity. There never is. Okay, so I didn't do the, um, what? Look at that little one like that. Okay, so like that. And then these need to, it needs to dry, and then when you're done, like I said, this is uh, used your 150, 150 or 100, and you're gonna sand this one direction, okay? All the way across like this. Now, if you also wanted to, I like to uh, go around and you'll see it. 
you start sanding around the edges of, of the um, cabinet door. Now, I remember I told you this one, it has a blue underneath it, but what's going to happen is it's really not going to show the blue, it's going to actually kind of look black, which I also like. So you can sand, you can rub hard. Uh, I like to do just around the edges, also around this outer edge. And that kind of also gives it the aged, the aged feel, the aged look. Okay? It also is, don't worry about it being perfect. Okay? On one, on one spot and making it even all the way across. There's no reason that you need to do that. That actually, it starts to become uh, mechanical. So, you just want to keep going all the way around, make it organic and such. And noticing I'm going like with the grain, I'm not doing this way, but I'm going with the direction um, of the pattern all the way like that, getting the edges. You see what's happening here? Can you see that, Jason? Can you see that it's starting to rub off? Yeah. Yeah? And uh, Jess Barnum is, isn't going to have to go to Target to buy this. She can make it on her own. Correct. Yes. Yeah, and these are expensive, right? If you've, if you've gone to, you know, even Target, you know you're looking at. I mean, I was just at, and I don't want to say, but it rhymes with foam foods. And um, it, uh, they were like $25 a piece. I was like, come on. Yeah, and up. You know, uh, I did, my sister recently uh, remodeled her kitchen. And she didn't know it, but I took some of her old cabinet doors. <laughs> and then I did for Christmas, and I did some of her favorite words. And then, back when I gave them to her for the holidays, and I said, that, this is your old kitchen. And she was like, oh my gosh, how cool is that? So, anywho. So you heard it here first, folks. You can re-gift people's own things to them for the holidays. That's right. You can re-gift it back to them. This is one of those that they'd be happy to receive, you know? Yes. That's funny, especially when you go, hey, I'll take those old cabinets off your hands. Really? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. So the third thing will last pretty easy. Just dust it off and you're done. Obviously, I didn't on this one. I didn't go with the sand because the paint's wet. But see, I like this. I like how this comes around. And even though it's this big bright blue, when you point, when you put the white over, it's going to turn a little bit of green. <laughs> okay, so it lights it up and it makes it fun like this and such like that. So so simple, so easy, extremely affordable, one of a kind. Right? That's the beauty about DIY. And plus. I don't know, it, it makes me warm and fuzzy too. I, it's a gift that I can't wait to give to a friend or a family member because I know that they're just gonna love it. I mean, the word signs, they, if you've noticed, they, they never go out of style. They, they never do. It's a gift that, you know, you're not gonna see somebody uh, re-gifting. So, that's the first one. Now the second one is pretty much similar, but a little different. Uh, it's leftover summer projects, fencing and decking. So this was literally leftover wood from some from a fence that we were building, and I like to get all I like to get my wood all hard lumber, which by the way is also local. Okay, um, so this is just a uh, a one by four, which really isn't a one. They it's literally thinner, but they call them a one by four, and. I just cut it at this, what length was this? I think it was uh, two feet, 18, yes, two feet, okay, like that. Now, once again, all of these are slightly different. That's the best thing, like this, this joy, see this one's wider than that one, okay? So your, my trees that I'm making here are two feet long. Your trees can be shorter if you want to. But for this project, I thought two feet would be fine. Plus then I use a lot more wood quicker instead of it, you know. 
um, tossing it away or letting it lean up in the back of the house for future projects or in the garage. Mm -hmm. So you take a stain. Um, this one, this stain is called, um, Jacob Bean, okay? And this is a foam brush. It's also a throwaway brush. Because once this dries, um, you're not gonna be able to use it again. So that's why they're also very affordable. And um, I do like to use the foam brush on these because the paint, ooh, look at that stain. The stain goes on fairly quickly. Now you can use a rag if you want to, okay? That's something that you can use. But um, it's gonna go on fairly quick, fairly simple. And I like the foam because then the foam, I'm going to move this over here, like so. Okay. And you only need a little bit because the foam brush is going to absorb the uh, stain. And so it's going to, uh, you know, a little goes a long way. So notice that I just did that one dip. Plus, I also like to use the foam brush on this because the stain is much thinner than paint and it splatters. So if you use, say, this brush, okay, and you use this, make sure you go, or you're outside, you know, because even, even when you're indoors with the, um, with the drop cloth, it's gonna splatter, and it's gonna splatter on you too. Um, and you don't, don't realize it until afterwards, and you have all these like little speckles all over you. That's what the foam brush, I like, it um, contains, the stain, um, and it's easy to spread out. And plus, once again, these brushes, I mean, they're nothing, like a dollar, dollar ninety-nine or something. So, although, look, I put too much on that, no worries. So you wanna do all the way around, the sides, the tops, and so forth. And I do the back, too. Uh, and it just takes one, it just takes, like, a teeny bit, then, I usually, oh, see, I let it running. Not good. Too much, okay? So take that off. Don't want to have that on there. Another reason you have the foam brush, because it's going to take some of that accent, the excess off. So you usually want the stain to sit, the, the average they say for it to sit is about 15 minutes. So for our purpose, we're just going to do a wipe. So you just get a rag, and you're going to wipe the excess off. Very easy. Now, if you want to, um, you can use, <laughs> I never, my manicures are always either uh, paint or stain. So if you have beautiful nails, ladies, and gentlemen, um, and you don't want to ruin your nails, you definitely want to do uh, latex gloves, okay? So put some gloves on, because this will get on your hands and it will stain. So. Once again, there you go. Very simple. And look, see how much, even when you just did a little bit, how much it comes off the ray. So it absorbs quite quickly. I love this color. This is such a good color. That, that dark, rich kind of espresso. So there's that. And then, so it's done. Here's my other one. Set this aside. These are so easy. These projects, they're so easy. It's like, I feel like I'm creating a crime almost. <laughs> like, no, don't spend all the money for the holidays. You could make this with stuff that you have lying around the house. Put the money in the bank. Go on vacation. Do that. Uh, definitely. So here's one that's done. And like I said, I did all sides. I did whatever my front's going to be, my front tops and so forth. Then I kind of look at it and I go, well, which side do I like better? that I'm gonna paint on. Do I like this side or this side? And it has the knot. So I kinda, I kinda like this one on this, okay? So, same thing, just a little bit of, a little bit goes a long way. So you use that acrylic paint. And I like to use these um, water brushes. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, uh, water paint brushes. The little ones and once again you can get these in a packet they come in a pack a whole bunch of them you get like five or ten for also just a few bucks now when i said earlier remember i was saying on on the red when you're painting and you're doing this like 
little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit like that and it gets all gunky. This project is really important to also to have long strokes. Okay, I have three different designs here. Now, what I also have done before is I will, before I know what type of tree I'll go, oh, what, what should I draw? And I'll just like sketch one out. I'm like, oh, I know, I'm gonna do a bunch of triangles and then I'm gonna do squirrelies on that. So that'll be one. And so I can use it just as a visual pattern so you're not trying to create it like on the fly. And then I'm like, oh, okay, like that. Okay? Yes, right? That's top art school right here. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do one that's a little bit different. And I'm gonna go down and it's gonna be kind of Dr. Seuss-like. And I'm gonna put um, little balls and dots on it, on that one. And I like to do, now the great thing also about this project is I just did three. This, I just, I did one where I had a whole bunch of them. And I had them over the fireplace mantel. And they, can, they went all the way across. I did, I did like 15 of them. And side by side, it was so dynamic and powerful, but at the same time, really fun and unique. And everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. Like, and the, the best compliment is when they say, where'd you buy those? Where'd you get those? It's like, oh, left over from the fence. So here we go. Once again, um, it's not something you feel like, oh, I can't draw. Okay, a lot. Okay? Yes, you can. If you can do, if you can hold a pencil in your hand and you can go up and down like this, you could draw. So that's how simple it is. Now, with the paintbrush, once again, if you get nervous, like, oh, I'm gonna mess up, oh, like this, okay? Practice, so you can practice, the, 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 especially on this project, you want to go quickly on these because if you stop, you're gonna, it's gonna be very blobby, okay? It's gonna look like, let's see, I'll do it on this, I'll do it on this one. It's gonna go, you're gonna go like, and you start shaking like this. And especially if you drink a lot of coffee and caffeine, you're gonna be like, and you're, you're like, oh, and you start shaking and it shows. It will definitely show if you go slow because you're nervous to, be, to begin with. You're like, oh, I'm gonna mess up. Okay, the beauty about this project too is if you do, watch this. It's like, oh man, that's nasty. You get a little water because it hasn't dried yet. Okay. And you just wipe it off. And you can start over. You've got to do it quickly because it will dry, but then you can start over. So, what I recommend is then if you want to practice, practice on your pattern. So you can take your brush, and you also you don't want it to be gloppy. Okay? A little goes a long way also. And you want to do, and just get confident in it. Just be confident. You start at the top, and you go down and up, boom. Okay? It's kind of like calligraphy, if you ever had to take calligraphy in school. The same thing, it's very, it's very flowing, it's a free form, and, um, and that's also what's great about these, is like in some cases, the paint's gonna be thicker in one spot and thinner at the other. That's all right. Don't be, don't be hard on yourself, going, oh, that's ugly, I can't do that. That's one of the bit, um, most common things I get, for, especially when people in DIY, when I should probably say, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Because it's just part, it's just fun, okay? The DIY, I always say that, the DIY police is not gonna show up and give you a ticket. That's my standby. And you know, you're creating this. And if you're creating this with love and fun and happiness, it's gonna show up. But once again, but practice if you're nervous with it, okay? And that's all I that's all I did on this. Okay? Amy thinks that it's looking good. So Yeah, right on the piece of cardboard. On a piece of cardboard. So She believes in you. Oh <laughs> well thank you. So let's see, on this one, I'll do 
I'll show you this one. This one's fun. I'll do this one. So all I did is I just, oh, before I do, notice what, do you see, what makes these um, go together? Okay, they're all different trees, right? They're different styles, different shapes, but what makes them go together? A couple of things. The colors, right? They're all the same color. That's key to this project. So if you did do a whole bunch, I, that's what I want you to do. Is I want you to stay within the same color tone. So use the same stain and use the same white, okay? This, what, see this what I did? Right here, I did the same star on the top of every tree. And that's what makes them the family. That's what keeps them together, especially when you're going all the way across. And notice, I also did the stars um, at the same height. So to do that, I would measure, so I went, okay, that's about two and a half inches from the top. So I'll take my pencil and I'll go from the top and I'll mark two and a half inches. And I'll find this, if you want to be you know, really specific, you can go right in the center like this. So you know the top of your tree, the top of the tree is at two and a half, and then you're going to put the star on the top. So that's a good way instead of, notice the unison also, right? So that's how this flows. That's why these look good together. And it's real simple because visually, just that visual technique of putting these tips at the same height and putting the same star upon bar on top, that's what keeps together even though they're all different. So that's one of the, now on this one, did I make a brand? Oh yeah, so I made the stump, and notice how fast I'm doing this, fast, very fast, okay? Like this, because trees are organic, right? They're different, they're all, every single tree, every single tree is different. Every single imperfection of mother nature is perfection. So this also, I think I went, this was about three inches. So I'm gonna make a little mark on that from the bottom of the trunk so I know where to stop and I just kind of do an indentation with the pencil. So I know that that's where I'm gonna to go to the bottom and I'll usually start, I'll put a dot there and meet up, okay? So see these long strokes that I'm telling you about? And I'll lift this up and I'll show you and I'll show you that it's not perfect but that's what makes this fun, and that's what makes it unique, is I'm, not I'm, I'm purposely not trying to make it perfect. Okay, that, what, that took like 30 seconds, yep, or less. So, you don't have to wait till that dries. Then the next step, that's why I'm like, you, see, you don't wanna get too much paint on these poor lobby. All I did is then I just went down and I went, triangle, triangle, all these little triangles, triangle, triangle, and I just kept doing it. I didn't think about it, okay? I just kept going like this, triangle, 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 and kept going down and up. And then I started adding a few more little spots, little branches on the inside, bringing it out. Uh, Jason, who was that? Who was, um, Ross. Who is the guy that painted with the fuzzy hair? Oh, oh. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. You know, Bob Ross would be like, yes, and just, you know, add this and add that. He loved his happy little trees. That's right, his happy little trees. And that's, but notice how quick Bob Ross paints, right? He used to, they painted frantically, right? Because he didn't slow down, and that's what the beauty about, the, about nature is that if you try to perfect it in your painting, uh, that I have found from artists, it, it, it comes out uh, fake. Elena says, happy trees. That's right, yeah, right? Happy trees. And notice I just, look, I just, all I'm doing is I'm just going like this, real quick, real quick, easy. Did I take that all the way down? Let's see, yeah. But that's the thing also is your tree is gonna look different from mine, like your branches. Okay, will turn out different from mine just because how you hold your brush. You might be a lefty, okay? Or you might start, I'll notice I start heavy at first and then I go light at the end. Some of you don't, you don't have to do that, but then I'm just gonna add some more like this. 
bring it out. Very simple, very easy. I also like the dark stain on the white. It gives it a little punch versus if you went into more of a, say, an amber stain. Okay, so there's that. And then I just put a star. Now, some of you are like, I can't do stars. Stars scare me. You don't have to. You could do something like, once again, just make it unison. What if you just went like, okay? That's the beauty about DIYing is you have the flexibility to do what you want to do and that you're comfortable with. And because uh, I can, I can freehand stars. Stars are hard sometimes because they get a little clumpy. But I mean, how cute is that? Done. Done, done, done. So simple. So, and notice you didn't have to do a whole bunch of coats. Like this one, you will, right? You'll have to do two or three coats on this. On these, not, you don't. You don't. Um, but I mean, it's so fun. So simple. So, I'll put that away. So, um, FYI, my family that is going to be, uh, that are you guys that are watching this and that will be watching this, yes, this is what you are getting for Christmas, by the way. <laughs> So, spoiler, spoiler, right? So, next up, you just want to get some rope. Now, you can do string, you can do twine, you can do ribbon. I just always use what I have left over. And so, I had some of this leftover rope. And so, you want to cut, um, and also, it depends on how far you want the space to be. Um, I made these just to let you know. How long did I make these? 14 inches. So uh, from the top measure, I'll show like this right here. So this was, and I did, I kind of did this on purpose. Notice I have um, the string right kind of in the middle of the stars. Once again, remember I said what brings these all together? Same thing. Here's another pattern that I did with the rope. So they're all on the same level instead of some rope being higher some being lower and so forth it's just those little details that that um it's almost like a subconscious thing you don't realize it until somebody points it out to you oh that's why they all go together even though they're different so so you cut your rope all the same so that's so however many you want to do then definitely cut your rope accordingly okay so i've got three here and so cut them all the same length so you know you're not messing up later. Then you just take, now these are, you can take uh, thumbtacks, you can take upholstery pit tacks. Once again, you can get these at any craft store. They come in all different shapes and sizes, and uh, they come like brass, and silver, and copper, and gold, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, I'm going, this one's still a little wet, so I'll move this one out of the way. Here's one with the star that I did. So, put that on the side. Let's see, what did I say? Were you listening? Two inches, I went two inches. So, I'm just going to bring that, mark it down, like so, okay? Do this in half, like this. So, I'm gonna put this about like right here. I'm bringing, and I'll show you this in a second. This is, and then, um, okay, this is a funny story, you guys. So uh, I lost my favorite hammer. I lost my favorite hammer. I flew in just for you guys to be here. And so I packed all this stuff and brought it to you to show you. And I got to the um, airport and at um, security, uh, they go, you can't bring a hammer on the plane. <laughs> I forgot to pack the hammer in my big bag. So I got my hammer, my hammer confiscated. Oh. So anyway, uh, family, FYI, uh, for Christmas, um, I'd like a hammer, okay? I was bummed, my favorite hammer. So thank you, Jason, for bringing this hammer. So, tap it in, a couple of taps. You guys, all these, you gotta check out all the other DIYs, you know, that we've done with um, all of our projects that we've shared, and this is our fourth one. Um, they're all easy. They're all easy. They're all very cost-effective. 
um, you know, budget wise. Oh, I didn't mark that two inches. See, I get kind of rushed some bots sometimes. I'm really good at eyeballing, but I have a lot of friends that go, I don't, I can't do that. So put the mark down like that and hammer it in. Whoopsie. This one's causing me a little bit of a fuss here. Let's see. There we go. See if that works. Oh, defective. Uh oh. That's all right. Regroup. There we go. Try again. Let's see. Even the expert messes up sometimes. Once again. Okay. It's going to turn out just the way you want it. So, oh, look, I did mess up. I got one here and one there. Oh, no, what are we going to do? <laughs> Start over. Okay, so how come I didn't mark that? You know, I don't have my glasses on. There we go. There we go. Make that better that way. Tap it in, see if I get it. Watch your thumb. Then I like to add a little detail and I fray it. So I just open that up a little bit, spread it out like so, call it good, and there you go. We literally did both of these, all of this, in I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's less than an hour, definitely. And once again, the beauty about this is that this is stuff, a lot of times this goes, um, it gets thrown away, even wood which you can reuse, right? You can recycle wood, um, but it does, it goes into the dump. And that's kind of a big mission of mine is to save and to reuse what we have. And um, I'll tell you right now, if you do any of these gifts, you're gonna be the life of the party. Um, they're great um, housewarming gifts. If you're um, going to uh, friends and families this year, um, gatherings, uh, it's a fun gift to give and leave it with the host that's doing the party. And uh, very simple, very easy. Um, and there you go. That's it. And once again, uh, this cost, well, I already had the wood. The stain's like eight bucks. This is two bucks. So that's 10 rope, I don't know. Yeah, and pennies, pennies, maybe a buck. So simple. And something that you can do over and over again. And also, what's kind of cool, if you do a tree like this that's not so Christmassy, you can leave these up year round. That's what's also unique about this too, is that you can, they can be season, season long, like joy. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and uh, any feedback that uh, we're hearing yeah. or any comments well, we'd love to hear. How, how many of the trees did you have up above your mantle? Yeah, so I had, I had 15. I did 15 of them, and it was, and then um, all I did was I had these 15 across, and then I got pine cones. I went on a nature walk and gathered a whole bunch of pine cones and put those on with the mantle, and that's all I did. So I kept it very simple. Plus, I'm very budget conscious. I don't want to spend a lot of money on um, holiday decor um, because, for one, I only bring it out a very short time of the year, um, and I don't like to store it. Um, the beauty about these two is they're flat, and so they're easy to store, they're not bulky. A lot of times you'll get a lot of uh, big bulky holiday decor, and it takes up a lot of room. So I had, fit, like I said, I did 15 of them, because that's, I have a big fence. I have a lot of wood left over. Uh, but then, uh, after I did, got done with that, and people came over and they saw them, um, I ended up giving, giving some of them away. Literally right there, because somebody's like, I just love this, and I go, you, you, which one do you love? And they go, oh, I just love this one. And I just took it right off, right off the wall, and I said, Merry Christmas. And, because I know I can just make another one. And they were just like, what? Are you kidding me? And, um, but once again, I think that's why I'm so passionate about DIYing, is because I love giving it to others, like how to do it, and, and how to share, um, and then also just literally giving them giving what I made to somebody else. Um, I think it comes back from being a kid, you know, right? You love to color for your mom and dad and give them colors and drawings and a parent would just 
keep it, they come home with the little clay that they make and they keep it. It's, I think I've just never outgrown that. I always like to make something um, and give it. And I hope you do too. I hope you um, spread the joy, spread the cheer, and help save the environment. Because I know for a fact it's going to save money. And uh, once again, save it, put it in the bank, go on vacation. Make that your gift. Or put it away and, and say, I'm going to save up for a special thing for myself. There you go. That's a win-win. Well, thank you, Shannon. Yes. See you later. Oh, pardon me. Well, thank you again, Shannon Quimby, DIY expert and stylist, for being here with us tonight on another episode of DIY with Inroads. I know I learned a lot, uh, not only that maybe I have a little artistic ability and can make some of these things. Hopefully, I don't have too many friends and family watching tonight because this is what you're getting for the holidays. I also learned some words like goopy, blobby, boopy. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna work that into my uh, everyday vocabulary now. And I also learned that you cannot take a hammer on an aircraft. So everyone out there, thanks again for tuning in to DIY with Inroads. If you tune in a little bit late, that's okay. You can go to inroadscu.org slash DIY we're gonna upload this video. The supply list is there. We have all the other episodes of DIY with Inroads loaded up on that landing page. So again, inroadscu.org slash DIY for all the DIYs. And again, thank you for joining us here tonight. Shannon Quimby, thank you. Everyone, please stay safe and healthy out there.